Uh, my name is uh, Christian Merkwert. Uh, I'm working for uh, Nordo. Nordo is a startup in Palo Alto in California. So, um, and the, the mission of our startup is to improve safety, potentially also efficiency in, in driving and in transportation. Okay. So, we want to make driving I mean, driving by car or by van or whatever, uh, transportation, we want to make it easier, safer, uh, first of all, and also smarter. Okay. Now, you can say, um, well, have a look. Autonomous driving is close, right? Um, for sure it is. Like, uh, I, I, I saw a lot of the self-driving cars already on the street. But still, the human driving is still uh, the dominating mode of, of driving, right? And um, I, I don't want to give numbers, but I think it will take a couple of years until the fully autonomous driving would be dominant, right? And in this time, even uh, uh, there will be a mixed mode of, of, of human and of autonomous driving, which is even more challenging. Um, okay, driving, transport is something we do every day. So people actually do like billions of miles uh, a, a, a year, right? Like not, not a single person, but, but the humanity. I don't have actually the, 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 the number. So we are spending a lot of time on streets. And the death toll of driving is amazingly high. It's like close to, close to 38,000 uh, deaths. Uh, related to, to driving and transportation in the U.S. alone. That was 2016. Numbers fluctuate, fluctuate from year to year. Um, it's 1.2 uh, fatalities per 100 million vehicle miles traveled. That is low. In the past, it was much higher. Of course, driving got safer already by a lot of technical means. Uh, I, I don't have the numbers for Poland. It's larger. It's, it, the, the number here is higher. It can be road condition. It can be, be, be condition of cars. It can be put faster driving style. Um, yeah. And when you, when you break it down, then you can see that actually a lot of collisions happening, uh, are happening because of distracted driving. Okay? Distracted driving or distracted dr drivers, meaning the driver is not paying full attention to the to driving right to the road to the traffic so um and it, it, it's the norm it's not the exception right people are distracted over the course of of you know driving from a to b uh, i don't say it's a hundred percent like like i mean people look on the street but just you know phone radio uh, looking around talking so people are distracted and it, it, it's simple right in this moment, when you are distracted, the, the probability of collision or of accident goes up. Okay? Yeah. So the problem is also that it's not only that the probability of accident goes up, but the accidents are more severe in the moment when you are, when you are distracted, right? You, you might not, you might brake late or, or, you know, you might have a higher speed. The, the impacts might have higher speed. Okay. So um, what could you do to improve human driving? Right? Um, um, you can assist the driver. So the driver is still in control of the car. Um, but what can you do? You can warn and inform the driver. How? Of course, you need like something like computer vision. You need potentially scene understanding. You can monitor. You, you can, you, um, so if you have seen understanding, you can warn the driver if there's an obstacle, if there's a dangerous situation ahead, right? Uh, if some pedestrians are walking into the, the, the trajectory of the vehicle. Um, the other thing that you can do... Oh, sorry, that's bad. Uh, the other thing that you can do is, of course, to monitor the driver. Um, the driver, the, the state of the driver, can be emotional state, can be like sleepiness, drowsiness, it's called. It can be distraction, right? The, the driver is not paying attention to, to the traffic, but it's like texting using the, 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 the entertainment, entertainment system of the car and the like. It, there's even more. Like, uh, if you imagine, um, you go to countries with, with uh, aging demographics, right? It can happen that, that people have a blackout in the car. They can have a heart attack. They can have different medical conditions. Um, 
And it would be good in this moment to warn or potentially even stop the car if possible, right? That would, that would be a bit more than, than of course, than uh, just to warn the driver. Okay, so what did Nordo do in order to, to uh, improve the driving? So we came up with a device. It's called the Nordo 2 device. I forgot to bring one. That's really bad. Um, you can see the device here on the screen. And you can see, you can see the device. It has two cameras. You can see this is the windscreen. We are looking from the outside into the car. Uh, this is the rear mirror, right? Like like the the, the 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 big black thing, right? And here's the device. It's 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 glued to the to the screen, right? To the window of the uh, to the front front screen of the car. And there's you can see below. There's a camera looking onto the street, uh, onto the traffic, right? And on the other side, uh, on the top, there's a camera looking into the cabin of the car, right? Okay, here's another like like diagram how it looks like. So basically, you can fit it more. It, it's something you can retrofit to, to more or less any vehicle, more or less any. There might be some that you you can't fit it inside. Uh, you see where is this big N logo? This is the, the the place where it's glued to the to the to the glass right of the screen. Um, it has two cameras, one facing to one facing to the street, one facing inside of the car. It has of course several. It ha it has a lot of sensors. Uh, it has LED and speakers to give feedback to the driver, and it has night vision support infrared uh, in case the, the, there's not enough light uh, to take picture into the inside of the car, right? Uh, just in the night, right? Or in a tunnel or whatever. And it has LTE connection uh, yeah, to the Nordo backend, okay? So if you have such a device, what can, what can you do with such a device, right? So there are, there are two things that you can do. You can put intelligence onto the device, so that, is, that means you can do very fast reaction, you can do immediate like warning of the driver, uh, but we also, of course, you are limited in some way in, in, because, you know, the computation capacity on, on such a device, and that, that's like kind of, um, don't take me, don't, don't cite me on that, it's kind of smartphone-like technology, smartphone-like chipset, right? It's, it's a bit advanced, it's a bit advanced, so it, it can stand the heat in a car, which a smartphone can often not. Think, of, uh, think about like California, think about places where in summer inside the car, the thing is in the full sunlight, right? Smartphones can usually not handle that. Um, so still the computation capacity is limited. Um, so we also connect to the cloud in order to run more, more advanced models. Okay, let's see it in action, okay? So, yeah, you see the two views, right? On the left, is the, you see the view from the outside facing camera, and on the right, you see the view into the cabin, right? And that's actually our, uh, the founder of, the, um, of Noro, okay? And let's play it. It's a small video, and you see he's driving by. And you see, okay, now it's a, it's a different person. Uh, and you see, um, we have alerting uh, when people get distracted. Uh, it's, it's an audio alert, but here just for, 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 uh, for demonstration, we show it here. You see green, uh, uh, green means, uh, red means the, uh, distracted, right? Um, distraction often manifests in people looking down, right? Looking on the phone, looking on something. Um, yeah. So, and that's, that's, that's a model that, that, that runs on device. Okay, that means Nordo is kind of an AI company. We use a lot of AI, we use a lot of computer vision, of course, uh, because the, the, the um, two cameras, right, that means a lot of computer vision. Um, we have models that detect distraction, tailgating, meaning to drive too close up front to the driver in front, which, you know, people like to do, um, also in Poland. Um, yeah, like I said, the device is in some sense compute constraint. It's not super little, but of course it's not as much as you could, uh, uh, as you can do in the cloud. And the challenge is to develop tiny models with, with super high accuracy. And yeah, that, that, that's of course, that's a challenge. I mean, a lot of, a lot of work is done, like Google is doing a lot of work. Um, mobile nets, for example, are especially designed. Uh, we also have our own like uh, approaches to teach, uh, to teach, um, well, to create models that are small and still very accurate. It's called the student teacher approach. This is, this is kind of published, uh, uh, but still in, in, in detail, if you implement it, it's not that easy. Um, 
we do, of course, the immediate, the, 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 really, uh, uh, the, the really like live uh, 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 models, they are run on the device, but also we run like higher accuracy models on the Nordo Cloud, and we have a dedicated research team. Okay, let's go a little bit into the backend architecture. So, uh, just mentioned in the presentation before, we use microservices, of course, and uh, but we also use Steam pro uh, stream processing frameworks. Um, mostly we use Golang, Python, but on device side it's C++, Java. Um, yeah, backend is hosted on AWS. We use a message pass that, like most of you should should, um, th 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 that's not really a new concept. You should know it. Um, so what happens? The device, of course, talks to the cloud, right? By, uh, by, by means of messages, um, and, and also like the within the cloud, the the different components exchange messages. We use both non no SQL and SQL data warehousing on the service side. No SQL to be really fast. Uh, if it's about da data warehousing for analytics, it's more like SQL like like stuff. Okay. Let's get a bit more inside. So, for example, the device connects every three, each device, and we are talking about a large number of devices, right? So we sell those devices to, to fleets. To fleets. Uh, fleet can be, for example, let's say, um, what is it like? Like Amazon has a fleet of cars, right? Or um, transport companies have a fleet of cars. Okay, so uh, actually we, we, we have the device deployed in thousands of devices. I don't have the actual number, but, but um, it's, it's quite huge and it's, a, it's exponentially growing right in the moment, uh, which also means we get really a lot of data. So it's, it's definitely in the order of, of millions of miles uh, per day and it's growing. Um, so, yeah, so each device connects every three seconds to the cloud, which actually uh, is a lot. We use this kind of status mes messages to um, construct trips, like a trip is when the vehicle is moving. Well, that, you know, it sounds so easy, but it's actually not so easy to really uh, determine what's a trip, like a trip from A to B, right? Uh, and when we think the car's on the road is moving, we try to identify the driver. I'm coming to this in, in, a, in a second. Um, while a trip is ongoing, the device also will send like events. Events can be heartbreaking, like a collision. Um, it can be turning very, very rough. Uh, there are the, of course, the driver is distracted. We will all record this uh, in the cloud. We are a bit bandwidth limited, right? I mean, you cannot, we can, well, well for cost reasons, technically we could, but for cost reasons we cannot stream uh, the live video from each device uh, continuously, right? If you count that, that would be like uh, uh, LTE-wise, that would be super expensive. Um, yeah, we do. A, having said that, we construct the trips and actually we assign a driver and we, uh, we assign the events to a trip. We have a dedicated warehousing for analytics and research. And... What are the challenges? Well, the challenge is, is orchestrating devices and cloud side. The problem is a bit that devices are far, right? We cannot reach them. They are not under our control, right? Like they, they are deployed to, to, to fleets and they are in, in professionally used cars. So the, 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 the fleet owner that owns the vehicles, they are not happy to bring that device back, right? The, car, the cars where they are installed, they must, they must you know, work. To, to, um, so we cannot easily do fixes, bug fixes, right? We have, we have some ways of doing it, but, but it's not that easy, right? Um, there are strong differences in the usage, usage pattern for different fleets. So um, it's, it's, it's not really easy to, to write the code in a way that it fits all of these different fleets. And then there's a problem. Different vehicle classes react very differently. You can imagine you have a small car, let's say the Polski Malo, okay? Um, which is, of course, not, 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 not around anymore. If you have a collision in that car or you have a collision in a 20-ton truck, it's very differently, right? In the truck, you will hardly have strong accelerations if the truck is not like hitting a, a concrete whatever wall, right? Like, but, but a, a certain collision in a big truck will manifest in a very little uh, signal uh, on sensor side, while in a small car, it's really like drastic, right? Um, 
yeah. And another problem is growth, right? Like we are growing really, really fast. We are exponentially growing in the, 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 the amount of data we get. And it's a constant race to, to keep the, the, uh, the infrastructure like, like keeping up with this. Okay. Now I said, when you have a trip, you want to know who's in the car, right? It's not a private car, so we are not necessarily sure who's the driver. It can be like a taxi company or something like this. It can be a rental car, right? So you have different drivers uh, uh, every time. So we do, do driver identification, and it, it, it's crucial to know because in the end we want to know who did the, who did the hard braking, who had the collision, right? We, we know which car, it ha which car has the event, but we do not know like, which person has it. So we, try, we, we take snapshots from the inside of the, the car, and then we run face identification. And actually, that is really large. Like, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of faces. We cannot use the, the Amazon recognition API because it would be actually too expensive. Uh, so we do it in-house. We do like, like a FaceNet-like model plus dempster Schaffer uh, uh, signal fusion, um, uh, because we get also other signals, not only the face, we get also other hints who is the driver. So we need to fuse this, this information to, to, to get the identity of the driver. Okay. And also, like, like the snapshot quality inside the car is really, let's say, it's really difficult. Because, you know, imagine you have sunlight. So often the sunlight goes, let's say, until here, Right. And a part of the face is in shadow, or, or really, you know, it's changing super fast. So, so contrasts are super, super large. So when you, th when you think that most of the face models that you can find in the net, uh, they are trained on really good images, right? Like, like at least with a proper light, lighting condition. And we don't have that, right? We cannot guarantee it. Um, uh, the other thing is that some drivers don't want to be... Uh, dr drivers sometimes put something in front of the... Uh, the camera, so you get only half of an image, uh, you know, half, you can see only half of, of, of the field of view, so that's really bad. Okay, I mean, that, that's kind of challenging. Yeah. Um, accidents and collision, of course, accidents happen, uh, especially in those fleet cars. These are cars that are not owned by the driver, right? They are owned by some company. Um, and we try to detect, of course, all of these events. Technically, you say events go from S S1, severity 1, to S severity 4. Sever severity 4 is, is, is a really strong collision. You will know when this happens, right? Uh, S1 means it's maybe just uh, you hit a curb, right? You just hit the side of the road, and it's like, you know. And, and for example, it's difficult to... Sensor, from the sensor data to do the, the differentiation between a speed bump, right, which you have at different places and people hit it, or you hit a pothole, uh, uh, and, and it's, it's difficult to, to, to draw the line between such an event and hitting, hitting the, the side of the, the curb, right? The, the side of the road. Um, yeah, when we have a collision, we definitely upload all the data we have on the device. So in this moment, of course, you know, uh, it's, it's an event and we, we want to invest the bandwidth. Um, to detect, to detect the collision, we use a WaveNet-inspired deep learning model uh, that, that tells us both the type of a collision and, and the strengths, right? Okay, now, let's see. We know what happens to the car. We know who's in the car. What can we do, right? We can, uh, we can use all the data and assign it to one driver, okay? And... Having this data, we can, sell, uh, we, can, we can tell something like this. That guy or that, that woman is driving very smoothly. That person is, is very attentive, right? Or that person is very often distracted. This person has collisions, right? So we put all that information together and we call it the VIRA score, okay? And the VIRA score is a score between 0 and 100. 100 is really good. Uh, 0 is really bad, Okay. Uh, and it's computed from like acceleration behavior, someone like really like driving very rough, like, you know, accelerating very hard, braking very strongly, uh, cornering like uh, uh, with a lot of G, right? Um, distraction, tailgating, so someone constantly driving too close up to, to, to the car in front. Of course, tailgating is not when you are standing in a queue at the traffic light. Uh, uh, that's not tailgating, right? Um, 
red light running, right? It, it doesn't happen super often, but, but if it happens, it's bad, right? Uh, it's a strong indicator that the person is not a good, um, is not a really good driver. Uh, not technically, but safety-wise, right? So here we see, um, this, is a, this is an example for an example feed, and here you see the score, it's between like 10 and, and it's about like uh, between 10 and 100, right? And you see the top performer, 16, you see the normal, normal range, the, 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 each point is kind of a driver, right? Uh, 108 drivers are more or less behaving in a normal range, uh, 49 are below, 12 are kind of really bad, okay? So, and actually when, when you have a fleet, when, when you have a lot of cars and you have drivers employed, it's a nice thing for the fleet manager to, to see the, that, right? Because otherwise you don't have a clue how, who is driving your cars in, in your vehicles in which way, okay? And um, that, that's of course a web app, so what you can do now, we are showing the movie, uh, we clicked on a driver that is really bad, now we are filtering for events, distraction, uh, we want only really bad distractions, and you get the video, and then have a look. So this is this is actually data from the website, so that's that's uh, that's okay. That's distraction, right? And that's hitting a curb, right? And that happens a lot. Um, you can see where was the car, how fast was the car. Okay, these events are used to to to, to calculate the 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 how well a driver is behaving. Now, okay, that is not only about like blaming and shaming. Um, it gives a score, and you can see this score is a time series, right? And actually, you can tell the people, you can tell the driver, that, have a look, you are driving like this, you are doing like that. Please try to be more attentive, right? Please try not to, 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 to text or not to phone uh, during driving, right? Um, and actually, what happens is that, if you look, that the driving style improves over time. So that's actually really an improvement in safety, right? Um, yeah, let me play you this, this, this short movie. Okay, now we are looking for, we are looking in the same fleet, sorting it by the score, and looking by, uh, looking for example for a really good driver, and you see that the score actually improved. Do you see it? From below 50 to, to about like 87, which is already really good, right? So, by giving drivers a feedback about their driving style, it really has an impact, right? It really has an impact on how the driver behaves. I know that now you can say, well, I want to drive like I drive, right? But, but uh, if you do it professionally, I think it, it makes sense to give people a feedback so they can improve. Okay? So, what are the benefits if you, if you use the Nordo, right? It's improved fleet safety. Uh, drivers, well, it's not only the, the, the drivers get aware, but also uh, everyone involved gets more aware of driving style. And uh, it helps us, it helps the fleet owner, fleet manager to, to actually coach their drivers. Um, and the funny thing is really that the driving style of most drivers improves over time. Like it's, I don't say everyone gets really super perfect, but in general it, in, in, it, it improves. And that, that leads to lower insurance premiums, right? Like, like, uh, uh, and, and, and also the, the, the fleet loses, uh, uh, um, um, has less losses due to like accidents, due to like insurance uh, claims, okay? And to give it a number that's a real number, actually quite recent, like uh, insurance claims go down 35%, actually because the, the people are driving safer and they have less collisions and they have less kind of <sighs> accidents and whatever kind of incidents, even, even an accident with your own car, right, where, where no one else is involved. I don't have any numbers on fatalities or something like that. Um, okay, and yeah, um, yeah, I mean, my talk is rather short. We are in different, in different like, like, like uh, lists, we are like among the, the, the top uh, challenge, uh, uh, the top AI companies, top 100, and I know, sorry, that's cheap. We are hiring, okay? Uh, we, are, we, we have uh, positions in Poland, in Ukraine, uh, and of course in, 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 in Palo Alto, in, 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 uh, in California. Okay, yeah, thank you, and questions? So we share it, we share it with insurance companies, but there, there, are, there are certain deals. First, I'm, I'm technical guy, so I don't know. Uh, but those are, those are insurance companies that actually demand their, their fleet that they insure 
to, to, to have the device installed, and then we give the data. Yeah, but but so um, the question was like like uh, if, the, if the, the the data can help the insurance company. So from from what I know, we work together with several insurance companies. They even ask us to inst well, they ask the fleet to have us installed, and then they get automatically a, a, a reduced premium. And um, actually, the insurance companies give us data. So to, for our analytic pipeline, I, and I think at least with those that we work with, we, we share data with them. Yeah, but the, the, don't don't quote me on that. Like, ask me. I'm I'm more the 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 the, the neural network guy, so not not the business guy. Yeah. In the moment, not. But the we are definitely like in this. Um, there's a panic button. There's a panic button. I'm not aware if it if it's triggered automatically. But uh, you can call the, uh, the panic button. Will get help, right? So yeah, the idea is actually when you have uh, strong collisions to automatically call 991, right? B b basically, not call, but send send out messages. So in this moment, in this way, you can even gain several minutes, uh, you know, faster, faster rescue and help uh, in in such situations. Okay, so one more. Sure. You mentioned that device connection is two seconds. Yeah. It, it can happen. It can happen, especially in US. The, the mobile cover coverage is not that bad, uh, not that good, actually, when you go outside of the, the metropolitan areas. Uh, the device buffers, right? I mean, we cannot guarantee certain, you know, we cannot guarantee that the device is online. Um, sure. From what I understood, the Nordo One was such an app, but I, that, that was way before I joined the company. So I, I don't have a lot of data on that. The problem with the app, with the app is that uh, it, it's of course possible, and, and, and it's, it, it's kind of, um, it's kind of the, 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 a close thing. Like, you know, like put, all the, put all the intelligence on a smartphone, um, you know, no installing of a device, no, no extra, no additional hardware. Um, the problem is that device um, smartphones are not that reliable. Like, like uh, also they are they are not mounted uh, properly. So you know when you have the the G forces, you don't know too well where where is the device. Is it in the pocket? Is it like you know? Is it in the in the center of the car? So um, yeah, there, it's 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 not that easy to do it with with uh, smartphones. Yeah. Um, we want to. We 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 are deploying uh, um, an app for the driver, so the driver can see in real time what's going on. So to give immediate feedback, and of course the device gives you feedback at least in in when warning you. So of course we don't actually we. <laughs> Have a look. The problem is, like, the, the question was uh, uh, if there's a kind of real-time feedback to the driver. We don't want the driver to have another distraction in the car, right? I mean, it would be super, it would be really, you know, it would be really contra, you know, it would be against our idea to, to, to give the driver more information to digest in the same moment. Drivers should focus on the street. Until there's autonomous cars, drivers should look on the street. That's kind of what yeah what we think sure the fuel consumption goes down so when when the when the vera score goes up uh, it, it includes the the the, the harsh, uh, the strong acceleration, strong braking. You know, if a driver is constantly like accelerating, braking, accelerating, braking, fuel consumption is of course much higher, right? So fuel consumption goes actually down in the moment when your score goes up. Some 
So I think we mentioned this. I'm, I'm not the one that goes out into the field to talk to them. I think it, it, it is definitely a benefit, but it's a, f it, it's a much smaller fraction compared to the insurance, right? So it's good, right? It's good that, that people use uh, less fuel. Uh, they drive more smooth, but, but the, the main benefit is, I think, the insurance because accidents just cost, cost you know, a lot, right? So, so we are reading parts of the information from, from the car sensors, right? Like from the car sensors, and we include that. So it's um, over, there, there's a port in the car that actually delivers it. And actually, this port is used to, to, to give power to the device. 